Hi, I'm Ron Netter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Netter. In this episode, we're going to talk, this is our second conversation about the IODD 2514, but this time we're going to talk about using it in place of a flash drive. Now, there is a file already available for this that will let you do a read-write hard drive, but that, as I found out, only works if you set up the drive for NTFS, and if you've listened to some or all of the previous video, you'll notice that I went another way. So what we're doing just to get everybody back on the same page is getting getting to the right page here. Now this is on the IODD 2514, super little device, very reasonable. And then we've also paired it with a Samsung 500 gig SDD. Now, as I indicated earlier, there is an option that you can put a hard drive in it. Now that's probably going to pull a little more power and I'm very careful on anything that I attach to a USB port that I'm aware of how many other devices I've got connected in because it's possible you could overload the power going to a port or multiple ports or possibly the USB controller and damage some of those ports. So we're going to go through the process of how to get this up and running. Now, again, it's read only, but there's advantages to that. So everything you're going to see is available also as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrenutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that's not going to affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, to review what we're going to have to do, now we've already got the IODD in place and it's got the SSD installed. Now, there's an additional piece of software and it's called DeepBurner. This is one I have used for years and the advantage it's got, and let's go ahead and switch over to that, well, no, right, you know, get, get to the right button there. What it's going to do is allow us to create our own ISO file. We can basically, you can customize to have multiple different ones. Now, granted, this is read only, but that's a good thing because especially if you're working on a system that you're not familiar with, this prevents that those files from being overwritten because they're already read only. So that's a positive. And this also makes sure that if you have to update that ISO, you're doing it back on your home system, not somewhere on site, and maybe files get damaged or missing, and it just makes things a lot simpler. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, let me grab where the, where the mouse is here. Now, when you go into DeepBurner, and this is available as a free or paid option, so, well, what are we, oh, that's because this is open. All right, let's go ahead and do this. And that's because that window was already open. So we're going to do new. You want to select create data, D data CD or DVD. And this is important. You want to click no multi-session. Now we'll click next. And at this point, we're ready to start copying files. So I've already got some files that are my candidates for doing this with. And I'm just going to copy Go up here to this window and select paste. Bob's your uncle. Now, something you want to do before you commit to creating the ISO file is go up here, right click on the CD root and select volume label, or you can just press F2. I'm one for taking sometimes the, uh, the indirect approach. So I will to the, call this as tools, ISO, test because I'm going to be creating some other ones so I don't want to possibly get something overwritten here now we'll press enter uh, label is too long okay well it didn't like that well all right then our right, here was here's what we'll do we'll go we'll change volume label and we'll just call it tools ISO I, I was playing with some numbers earlier so that's okay so it likes iOS okay obviously I can't spell today so we'll press F2 this time, press end and type SO instead of OS, press enter. Now, here's where the difference is going to come in. 
you will click on burn disk, but you're not going to burn a disk. Go down here to save ISO. Now this is where you're going to have to, well, you don't have to, to drill over or change over to your IODD drive. You can put it on your local system and then just copy it over. But I, for the purposes of this exercise, I am going to do exactly that. So I'll call this one tools, ISO, test. And obviously with this one, I can sit there and make it a little bit longer. And we will click save and voila, in the magic of an eye, it's done. Now we're gonna switch over here to the ISO drive or the IODD drive. And we are going to go to menu and make sure you select USB control and press enter. Now, if we go down here and select refresh that's going to essentially do as i interpret it is unplugging and replugging the drive because we've got to refresh the drive we're going to have to unplug i know i should have just done a safe ejection but hey i didn't okay trinity there we go i just wasn't holding my mouth right system rescue come on all right, now let's go one more time here. Trinity, okay, it says beginning of list. Clonezilla, Win 10. Okay, obviously it took a little, okay, there it is. Obviously it wanted to scan the drive and it wasn't happy yet. All right, so now we'll press enter. And if we switch over here back to our desktop, what has opened up? But the very ISO we created. So now you can see, and we'll just do a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll close that window and we'll bring up the other window so you can see it's got everything that we marked here over here. So that really is the, in the easiest way I found it's using one piece of software, DeepBurner. And it's, it's, it's available as a free or a paid version. So you've got a very easy way to create a whole set. Think of it much like creating a bunch of uh, flash drives. You, except the plus here is they're read-only. So if you hit a machine you're working on that has some sort of software on, and I've run into this to where it scanned a file, decided it was uh, some sort of virus, and it wasn't, it was false positive, and it erased the file. Well, here it can't because it's read-only. So there, that's an additional safety measure. Yes, you can make this, make the IODD drive read-only, but this is one less thing you have to remember. So that's very simple, one piece of software, and you saw how quickly that it was done. And other than my just not giving the drive long enough for the Windows 10 box that's on to go ahead and scan it. And then once you saw it, then it found everything. So again, just one file, deep burner. You can look for it. You'll find the site very easily. You, we've walked you through how to set up the a flash image so it's basically you go back over here and let's just take another quick look here so you will go up here to dvd files and where it has its own label when it starts up you just f2 or right click and change volume label and you can have multiple folders you can make this as versatile as you want to i like having a bunch of individual ones on here because that way you can make them very purpose driven and i can have instead of one big one or having to scan through a bunch of files on the actual iodd drive i can now have them as iso images that i mount so i'm minimizing the exposure of the information i've got on there so if i don't have those files elsewhere on the iodd drive then you've got everything ready to go so again one piece of software deep burner we showed you how to set up the flash drive image then it's just a matter of telling it to save the iso instead of burn and that's it you saw how quickly it was done it the main problem we ran into is i was just a little impatient and it took a while for it to know about all the drives all the isos that were out there now if you're watching this video on youtube you're going to see other videos on the screen that are the next steps to the one you've just watched or other content that you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please 
click on subscribe now and enable notifications. Thank you for watching this one. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.